Hey guys, Derek here again. So a few years ago, I was literally just an accounting and finance graduate, really just scratching my head every day, wondering where I truly belonged. And today I'm building startups. I'm a builder. I am an entrepreneur. I, I code websites using AI tools, and I've taught over a hundred people how to code and help them land jobs in software. So I even started a coding school that promises a job or it's hundred percent free. And we've seen over a hundred success stories um, of students landing jobs in tech across Southeast Asia. So why does this matter to you? Because if someone like me can make the pivot, so can you. And believe me, 2025 is best time to dive into coding, AI, and tech in general. Not despite AI, but because of it. Let's face it, things are feeling shaky right now. Maybe you're 25 to 35, very early on in your career, or maybe you're considering a switch because you're not enjoying what you've studied in university anymore but you feel stuck. Jobs that once promised a lot of stability that you kind of signed up for back in the days, they're changing today. Businesses are literally automating whatever they can automate. The AI bus is growing every single day and you start to hear headlines about tech layoffs and economic um, uncertainty. It's natural to worry and ask yourself questions like, is my job even safe anymore? Should I be learning something else? So indeed, by 2025 and maybe 2026 and beyond, the world of work looks very different. Automation and artificial intelligence, AI, they're shaping industries today. When we talk about things like repetitive tasks and basic data crunching, these things can now be handled by machines. Many roles today are shifting towards higher skill, human-centric tasks. That sounds intimidating, but it actually points to a key truth, which is the fact that the skills that you develop now are critical. Don't fall for the myth that you've missed the train. I hear it all the time, right? AI will be writing all the code. So why would I want to learn it today? In fact, that's a very common myth. Many non-technical folks and like content creators claim that developers are automating themselves out of a job. But leading tech thinkers, those who are actually building in the scene, are thinking of something that's the opposite of this. As AI tools get better, the output and the returns that you get from learning how to code is now exponential. It makes it an even better time to learn coding and it helps you learn so much faster today. So even though 2023 to 2024, we've been seeing a lot of tech layoffs and salary cooling, you got to remember that the world actually got used to the crazy growth in 2021 to 2022. Engineers were getting 30%, 40%, 50% raises back then. The salaries were like way above market range. We're not in hyper drive right now. And yes, global economies have their ups and downs, but smart, observers will be looking at the opportunity today. For example, companies in Singapore or in Southeast Asia are still innovating, adopting AI, expanding in niches like fintech, cybersecurity, and digital services in general. All these industries today, they all need skilled people. The problem right now is talent gap, not a talent glut. So the real problem right now isn't too much technology or not enough jobs. It's a mismatch. Many jobs today want digital and coding skills, but too few people have them. This is exactly why coding and AI tech savvy people will always be in demand. And in short, the landscape is actually shifting now. People no longer just learn how to code to be software developers. You can learn to code to do a broad range of jobs. And learning to code is a way to move from being a passenger just kind of like, you know, relying on the market to, to, to being the driver of your career path yourself, right? Let's just quickly break it down from a first principles perspective, what exactly coding is. At its core, coding is simply telling a computer exactly what to do step by step. Think of it like learning a new language, the language of machines. Once you speak that language, you can create apps, automate tasks, analyze data, anything software can do. And why does that matter today? Why does it matter in 25, 26 and beyond? Because the world today runs on software. Every company today needs websites, automation tools, apps to maybe do payroll, analytics dashboards, automated processes, and all of these things that I just mentioned, they're all done by code. From ordering food delivery to running factories and financial systems, software is the invisible engine that's making all these things happen. And if you know how to code, you have the keys to that engine. And if you think again from a first principles view, a fundamental truth here is that humans come in with the ideas and the problems to be solved and computer all they do is they do the work based on instructions given to them. Coding bridges that gap. 
you think of a solution or a product or an idea, you break it down into logical steps. First click this, then this happens, and then send an email there. And you have an idea in your head. And then next you write the code or you hire someone to write the code to execute upon it. Sure, you could hire someone, but if you don't have programming skills, you're probably stuck to outsourcing it or hoping someone really good delivers on it for you. Knowing how to code means you don't need to wait. If you see something, just get it done yourself. You're, you're no longer afraid of whatever obstacles or blocks that whatever tools you're using are giving you. You can comfortably go out there and achieve whatever you want to achieve on. Just all you need is internet connection and your laptop maybe. That then you can just proceed to start building the solution yourself. That's why today many experts actually argue that coding is a new kind of literacy. As one of the tech leaders put it, I'm not sure where I saw this before, but he says that just as literacy, which means the ability to speak and read and understand words, that went from an esoteric skill among the elites to now being the global standard for education to increase the quality of and the standard of living that humans are going through today, coding is now becoming essential for everyone. If we are to understand, maintain, and will and control the AI that will define the future for us. In other words, to shape this future where AI is everywhere in every part of our life, understanding basic coding fluency is going to bring you miles, leaps and bounds ahead of those who don't understand code. And this is something I'd like to talk about a little bit more, which is at a granular level, coding teaches you computational thinking, breaking down problems into chunks, solving them step by step. That skill applies even if you don't end up writing thousands of lines of code. In fact, even if frontline workers and managers benefit from automating and optimizing parts of their jobs. And for any tech or data related role, you will need these fundamentals. It's not about memorizing syntax or frameworks anymore. It's about understanding how to solve problems in logical and systematic ways. In practical terms, in 2025, tech roles are still clamoring for people who can code. The World Economic Forum um, in its uh, 2025 Future of Jobs report, it highlights that technology related roles from AI specialists to software developers are among the fastest growing jobs in the world today. One research forecast even projected that 540,000 software engineering jobs, new ones are going to be released in 2025. And a lot of them are gonna be tied to working, using AI to become software developers, using AI to automate repetitive tasks. A lot of them are related to that. And these are not jobs for robots. They are roles to build and manage robots. So again, coming back from a first principles perspective, if you want skills that remain valuable, when machines are doing more, learn the skills to talk to those machines. Coding is the ultimate multi-purpose skills. It's durable, it's flexible, and it compounds. Each concept that you learn makes the next one easier. And very soon, you're not just coding one project, you're designing systems, working with data, and maybe even teaching others how to code. Well, I know some of you might be thinking, this sounds great, but I'm not a techie. Where do I even start? Let me share how I did it. And also some real world lessons that I've learned along the way. So my own journey actually began um, far away from Silicon Valley. In college, I actually studied accounting and finance, but early on, I discovered entrepreneurship by flipping basically graphical use calculators. I would buy them cheaply and resell them to students. It sounds small, but that side hustle taught me the concept of supply and demand, profit margins, and market fit. I was earning more than a typical salary at 17 years old just by solving a real problem. People needed to buy calculators, reliable and quality calculators affordably, right? That was my first lesson. You can create value from scratch, even as a student. So after college, I worked in a corporate finance role, but I felt out of place. The startup world that I've seen at university fascinated me when I was uh, working basically as a student venture capitalist. And I realized that tech was at the heart of the biggest companies. Think Apple, think Google, think Facebook, think Amazon, right? I wanted to build an asset to build a product rather than um, you know crunch numbers on a spreadsheet. So in 2019, I quit my job to learn coding, self-learn full-time, right? That transition was like one of the easily, one of the toughest periods of my life. I couldn't afford a, a boot camp. I couldn't do a second degree. So I self-taught myself using a lot of free resources and just really just building a lot of projects myself. And within six to eight months of intense, really intense learning, or, you know, coding from 9 a.m. to like 12 a.m. at night, something interesting happened. My friends who did have IT degrees, they were coming to me for help. And I was tutoring them on technical interviews and helping them do their backend projects and even freelancing for software projects. And the lesson here was that, that, that I realized was that a pure degree does not guarantee skill. What matters is what you do with what you learn. So to push myself in 2020, I started this thing called the Hacker Collective, basically weekly meetup groups where all of us will learn by doing. I gave myself a challenge right, to build one project every month and that forced me from the theory that I've learned to turn it into reality. Right? I remember working on a little web app, working on uh, scripts, working on anything basically, right? and we used free resources like Code Academy together, but most importantly, we held each other um, accountable. Right? The community was amazing, it was eye-opening. Um, uh, we had people from different backgrounds joining. We have lawyers, we have accountants, we have like engineers, 
and soon you know dozens of students were showing up and um, many dropped off which happens most of the time uh, because coding is tough and that's when I realized that it's tough to sustain alone it's just very tough to persevere through it but the ones who stuck it out started being real thing building real things and I even started teaching um, some of the sessions right so teaching actually forced me to master the gaps in my own knowledge and by explaining a concept to someone else I understand uh, the concept better myself and that's a trick that I still use today if I get stuck I say um, imagine that I have to teach this concept to someone in my team or, or a friend who knows nothing about it immediately I, I find the gaps in my knowledge and I clarify the logic that's required for me to understand this topic good enough so I can teach it so from this effort something clear emerged a practical and a project-based approach um, kind of works I realized it works so we had students from all walks of life some had CS degrees many did not one time a colleague of mine who was way ahead of me he demoed a project that he built and it really lit a fire in me because it proved that there was no secret degree needed because this this person this friend of mine that I've made he also came from a background where he did not have any form of CS degree so over time I tried many things like running paid workshops doing freelance work to fund our learning even taking equity in startups where I was the CTO for free right side note what's that uh, most of the businesses here they fail but I've learned so much and we tracked our students and it turned out that at least 10 people from those early cohorts landed tech jobs some in Malaysia some in Singapore even some remote roles in US companies and one really cool story was that um, I hired a junior developer and I coached them intensively and and three months later they snagged up a job uh, in Singapore for 5,000 sing per month right and that was proof to me that what we were giving to people here it paid off and it was giving them real skills and adding real value to their life so all these experiences what what they did was they really showed me that learning by doing and peer support is powerful people who came from finance marketing even construction backgrounds were suddenly coding because they had proof of work now right they had built projects in out in their portfolio that they could talk about in their interviews and in fact that became our, our philosophy you don't need a six degree or 10 years of experience what you need is real skills and examples of using them so fast forward to 2022 I formalized all of the experiences that we've built into this company that I'm running now called Sigma school which is a three-month coding boot camp um, where we leverage our incentives to our students outcomes what we say is you get a job or it's a hundred percent free so we started small with a community course and the, the response blew us away we had like thousands of signups on the first week we all we did was spend a small marketing spend of around three thousand ringgit and that turned into like 30 40 around thirty five thousand ringgit uh, just within the first month even before our official launch even before we completely done the curriculum clearly we were not the only ones seeing the gap in the market and when we saw that response we knew we were onto something and since then Sigma school has grown to partner with 50 plus companies in Singapore Malaysia Australia and we've had graduates from all kinds of backgrounds um, there was even a doctor in the UK who pivoted careers and you know gig economy workers like grab drivers who finally broke in tech right and one of our star students got hired just one and a half month into the program before even graduating right so these stories underline one thing with the right guidance and the right projects and the right accountability structure um, normal people who put in the hard work can learn to code quickly and even land jobs um, that they never thought was possible so from flipping calculators to launching a coding school my own journey has kind of showed me that small consistent efforts one project a month or maybe output based learning kind of thing right these things they beat cramming theory focus on solving real world problems and building a community around it and then pushing consistently pushing forward that philosophy has stayed with me and it's why I'm passionate about helping others do the same today enough about myself but let's tackle the elephant in the room today right which is AI and I get it everyone's talking about AI these days tools like ChatGPT or Copilot or Claude or Cursor so it's tempting to think uh, maybe I don't need to code anymore right AI will do it but here's the thing that people don't realize right AI will never replace the need for human programmers it will make yes it will help actual programmers become so much better to a level where maybe companies don't need as many programmers anymore that's very valid right but it will make skilled programmers 10x more valuable and it also helps you close the gap between you which is a who's a really you know forward driven forward thinking um, junior developer it closes the gap between you and a senior engineer who's not using AI Right, so tech leaders and researchers keep saying this. For example, AI pioneers like Andrew Ng and Bill Gates, they explicitly argue now that now is the best time to learn coding. Andrew Ng put it succinctly. As these tools continue to make coding easier, this is the best time yet to learn to code, to learn the language of software, and learn to make computers do exactly what you want them to do. He's saying that as AI lowers the barrier of entry, now more people can and should become code savvy. Here's why, right? AI can generate code. 
but it doesn't understand your users. It doesn't understand the goals of your project, your company's needs, or how to design a system from scratch. It's like asking a calculator to solve a problem without telling it the right numbers and context, right? Coders do that work. Even the biggest AI models need humans to fine tune it, to fix it, and to apply them. Bill Gates actually noted on one of his podcasts that even if AI changes industries, three jobs will remain the same. And he listed coding first. Why? Because coders will always be there, needed to maintain system, ensure that it's debugged and it's stable, and to refine and improve the AI systems. So think of it this way, right? So AI is a tool, a very powerful assistant for um, writing routine code or generating ideas. But like any other tool, its output needs review and direction. So a very famous quote from a Microsoft engineer, his name, his name is uh, Will Cancel, he sums it up. He says, trying to replace engineers with AI is the most overhyped trend in 2025. He points out that you can automate tasks like bartending or toll booths, but not the creative problem solving work of software engineering. In fact, he says jobs will open up where we need people to maintain AI systems. Right, so I think that's that's about it. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You know, learning to code takes effort. Um, it's not some get rich quick schemes or, or a gimmick for that matter. But if you're reading this and you're already curious, which means you have the mindset part down, you just need to start acting on it now, right? Think of coding as an investment in yourself. In five years, I guarantee the skills that you built today, it's going to pay a payoff, right? Maybe even shorter in five years, in a few months you see it happen. You might end up in a higher paying job or maybe even start something that solves a problem that you care about. You might use coding to level up in any other careers that you're in today, even in marketing or operations on strategy or whatever like that, right? Coding lets you automate your work or launch a side project. It's a compounding game, right? Spend an hour a day on it and one year from now, you will be hundreds of hours in and enough to be comfortably proficient in something. So remember my story. I was a guy who was flipping calculators for a living. I was a guy who was, uh, you know, very lost in life doing finance stuff, graduating with a degree in finance, not, not knowing what I signed up for. Um, I, I, freelance, I went into freelancing, you know, with uh, no tech background. And if I could do this, you could too. I launched a business, I pivoted it um, into a coding school and I'm still learning today. I just integrated AI into our full stack course now. And if I can learn a new tech or a new AI tool, in my late 20s, I'm sure you can too, right? So here's the nudge for you. So just pick one thing today, pick one thing right now. Maybe it's signing up for a coding bootcamp. Um, maybe it's opening up Code Academy and just following along the tutorials, right? Maybe it's just writing hello world in, in Python or JavaScript, whatever, just choose one, right? Maybe it's watching a YouTube, five minute YouTube video. Tiny steps matter, do something today, start somewhere and make sure to continue on a healthy cadence that makes sense for you. Tomorrow, do a little more, right? Fix a line of code, fix a little bug, um, stay consistent. You might be thinking, yeah, but what about real life responsibilities, right? I get it, we all have jobs, we have bills, we have families to feed. Um, that's why learning efficiently matters. And that's why it's even more attractive for you to do it when you're young, right? Do the things that give the most return. Do hands-on practice and project building. These are output-based learning that helps you, um, gives you the maximum gains that you'll be getting. If you can dedicate a few hours each week, that's enough to get you along. And remember, you're not alone. Thousands of people your age are in exactly your same, the, the same shoes as, as you are in right now. Learning to code with alongside AI, joining them, uh, communities, boot camps, online forums, they're all there. You will find mentors like me and my team and peers willing to help. So 2025 is what I call a crossroads year. AI is here, but it's empowering us. Companies are still hiring like crazy, especially for people who get tech and especially for techies who understand how to use AI to speed things up. Join them, join communities, join boot camps, right? They will help you. Um, if you start now, six months later, you will be able to start building um, your own software. You will make huge strides in your own life. It could be transformative to your career and your life trajectory. So a year from now, you could be, you know, working in your dream job, working remotely whatsoever, right? Learning to code isn't just about code. It's about thinking clearly, about adding value, about solving problems. So do that consistently and you will ride this wave rather than get swept under it. So do it, make those small bets, stay consistent, stack those skills and build something real. Your future self will thank you for it. And remember this quote, the best time to start planting a tree was yesterday. The next best time is today.